racist man fires a gun at an electric company salesman. You see the perp. Now, let's tell you what's going on. Fort Worth, Texas homeowner Edward Camp shot at a black electric company salesman when he arrived on his doorstep. The salesman who survived the encounter was choosing to hide his identity when speaking with NBC5 Dallas Fort Worth News. An identified man who does work at the electric company Reliant Energy was knocking on doors in East Fort Worth asking homeowners about their bills. That was earlier this month. NBC DFW reported when the veteran sales agent approached a residence on Purrington Avenue, he was shook up after he saw how the resident responded. He just came out and just straight pointed the barrel at me and then shot me and told me to get away from here. N. The man told the outlet uh, these horrifying details. I'm lucky it didn't hit me. It hit the table. Atlanta Blackstar filling in the details for us. Now in NBC DFW's news broadcast, the victim showed the damaged tablet, which was shattered by the bullet. Just amazing, he wasn't injured. He said he usually holds the device at the side of his body, but that day it was in front of his stomach. He was able to escape, call the police who responded to the scene. This is the one thing I always fear, getting shot at the door. And today, it happened, the man explained for the outlet. I got two daughters. I could have been in the hospital dead now. Suspect was not inside the home when officers arrived. A spokesperson for the Fort Worth Dallas Police Department told Atlanta Black Star on Monday, 58 year old Edward Camp was arrested on February 13th, charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Jail records show Camp is being held at Tarrant County Correction Center on a $150,000 bond. Here's the response from the salesman's employer. Reliant released a statement saying they're working with police on the investigation. We're in the process of learning more, but thankfully the sales agent was not harmed. Well, not physically perhaps. Safety and security of sales agents is our top priority, the statement said. Now, Senator. I don't want to disparage uh, Reliant in any way because they're not the focus of this story. But I do wonder when people will realize the times we live in. I'm not sending any black person out to go door to door in Fort Worth or perhaps every other part of this country. And I don't think that that's radical. I think that that is, well, obvi. I think it's obvious, Senator. What say you um, react to this incident? Unfortunately, Sharon, you are correct. There were days gone by, it may, just as few as 10 years ago, you know, that it was safer to go door to door. But we know what happened to this uh, reliant worker is an example of the d- decay in this, in our society, our gun obsessed society. The society says shoot first and ask questions later. And your point about the type of community, I mean, at least reliant can look at the type of community that they're sending people in and maybe choose accordingly. That's a really sad thing to say in the 21st century, but it is a reality. And based on how the homeowner responded to this worker who does not want to be identified by calling him the N word, it is very clear how he feels about black people. He shot this man and but for a tablet, who knew a tablet could, uh, pose as a bulletproof vest. But in this case, that tablet was a bulletproof vest for this man who not only could have been just shot, he could have been killed. So it's, 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 it's these are sad times, Sharon, it really is. Yeah, they really are, Senator. And I wonder when we, we do these cases and indisputable Dr. Ritchie's team, they do such a good job at the follow through. Because often I, you know, the news reporter and me, the investigative journalist, um, the news cycle moves on. And people forget and their plea deals and lesser charges and things. And I don't know if I believe that there should be uh, increased penalties, laws on the book for this kind of thing. But I believe in calling a thing a thing, if you will. Um, What can we do to try to put up a roadblock, deter these bigots from opening fire at first knock? 
Yeah, and, and we know there are countless stories over the years of people. I remember a story of a, a young a teenager that was uh, seeking refuge and just knocked on the door and the homeowner just opened up fire. Now, there's one thing to be concerned. Like, there's, there's no doubt. You and I are not debating whether or not homeowners have a right to feel safe in their house. But somebody knocking on your door is not an imminent threat. You don't have to open the door. You can look out the window, look at the door to see if in fact it is, but that's not the debate. To open the door with a po- pointing the barrel of a gun at somebody and then to open fire on that person. So what can we do? First of all, people need to stop acting a fool. Yes. I mean, yeah, laws are important, but people's actions, that gut instinct to not only take your gun to the door, but to shoot at this person first says that there's something wrong with this person, Sharon. So yeah, laws are important, but how we comport ourselves is important as well. And even if there had been, and there's a law, there's laws on the books right now. So this, he's been charged with, with aggravated assault, meaning what he did was illegal. So that's already on the books. But what do we do to stop people from responding this way immediately out the gate? And that means that people like this man have to search their souls and their hearts to determine why you thought that was the best course of action in the first place. And then secondly, because we do already have laws on the books for this, the book must be thrown at this man. He must be made an example. And hopefully by making him an example that may, may or might detour Mm -hmm. others from acting out in the same way. Yeah, what happened to those laws that were on the books were like, you know, they had them for certain drug offenses that people were charged with, where the judge had no discretion. You get the book thrown at you, that's it. Um, But real quick, before we move on to the next one, Senator, you're an activist, you've been one your whole life, you campaign, you've won public office. I just want to live and I want my child mm-hmm. to live and I want black people to be able to live. What What is the advice? Because I can't imagine that you have not um, felt some trepidation going and knocking on doors. I don't know how long it's been. Yeah, I have Sharon. I mean, just, just in 21, 22 when I was running for Congress and going door to door, not just me personally going door to door, but also I had staff, people going door to door, both staff and volunteers going door to door. And there wasn't a moment that I didn't fear that something may happen. I mean, you hope that it doesn't. You send people out two by two. You tell them what to do to knock on the door, You know, step back, have the t-shirt on or the sweatshirt on so they're easily identifiable. But even in cases like that, you just never know. And what happened to this, this man I mean, he he wasn't, you know, according to all reports, he, he didn't do anything wrong. This ho- homeowner just decided to, again, shoot first and ask questions later. Uh, you and I were talking off camera about maybe gone are the days where people can go yeah. door to door. And I remember growing up that that was the thing, you know, so it's just really a sad day in America where people can't this even neighbor to neighbor. What if he wasn't working for a company? Maybe, you know, your neighbor is knocking on the door just to even ask for some help. And to think that this person would shoot first. And ask questions later is really a sad commentary on the state of our nation, Sharon. I sold Girl Scout cookies, you know, fundraisers. Is that I, I would never let my daughter. I don't even want her trick or treating. I'll be honest I with you. I, I don't I want to take away all joy, so I, I I will go out there with her and a few people we know. But it's a sad commentary. And like you said, if I'm not expecting anybody, guess what Sharon Reed does? I don't even care if the TV's on. They hear me moving around in there. I don't answer the door, Senator. That's right. My house. Okay. That's right. But I'm not going to open the door. Guns blazing. No. Okay. It's yeah. a it's a sad commentary.